Good morning and welcome to the City of Austin's virtual press conference to discuss the city's relief of emergency needs for tenants assistance program, also known as the rent assistance program. My name is Jeff Patterson with the City of Austin's Neighborhood Housing and Community Development Department, and I'll be moderating today's conference. Today we are joined by our speakers, Rosary Trulove, Director of the City of Austin's Neighborhood Housing and Community Development Department and Michael Gerber, President and CEO of the Housing Authority of the City of Austin. In addition, we also have Nefertiti Jackman, City of Austin Housing and Planning Policy Manager, and Pilar Sanchez, Vice President of Austin Pathways, a subsidiary of the Housing Authority. Today's pool reporter is Kevin Clark of KXAN. This press conference is being simulcast in Spanish on ATXN3 and is closed captioned services uh, being provided. Director True Love will open things up and provide a program inter uh, overview. Following that will be Mr. Gerber's remarks. Then we'll turn to the pool reporter for facilitation of questions from the press at the end. We will begin with a welcome by Director True Love. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, again, my name is Rosie True Love and I'm the director of the City of Austin's Neighborhood Housing and Community Development Department. And I'm really pleased to be here. Thank you for joining us here today for the announcement of the Relief of Emergency Needs for Tenants program. This program is delivered, is delivered in partnership between the City of Austin and the Housing Authority of the City of Austin and will provide a total of $17.75 million from both federal and local sources of support uh, to Austin renters who have been financially impacted by COVID-19 in the form of rental assistance and other forms of support and assistance. We do not need to remind you of the severity of circumstances surrounding this pandemic. The coronavirus endures, the economy struggles, renters are increasingly unable to pay their rent as worries mount about being evicted from their homes. Housing continues to be a critical component for both public health and safety when confronting this pandemic. Austin households struggling to pay their rent is an added pressure on an already stressed community. The greatest impact is felt in communities of color and our families with children, our veterans, our persons with disabilities, and those who are earning less income or no income during this difficult time. According to data from Travis County, there is a backlog of eviction filings, which have been suspended locally through September by Mayor Steve Adler and Travis County Judge Sam Bisco. And these are largely concentrated on the city's eastern and southern areas in our historically black and Latinx communities. Our ability to preserve rental housing for impacted populations is critical to maintaining the social safety net. Families without homes risk overwhelming our shelters, flooding our emergency care centers, and overburdening our public services. We need to manage as best as we can with the resources available to us through local and federal sources to keep renters in their homes where they can be safe amid this ongoing crisis. In May, the city, uh, the city of Austin and the Housing Authority partnered on the first rent assistance program, which provided $1.2 million in partial rental assistance to approximately 1,700 low-income households. And while that was a remarkable step for the city, we received more than 10,000 applications for help. For this round of the rent program, the city is committing to distribute $12.9 million in full contract rental assistance and has made important changes to the program based on feedback we heard from the community and from our Austin City Council. Uh, up to three months of paid rent will be available to households whose income is between zero and 30% of the median family income. And one month of paid rent will be available to households whose income is between 30 and 80% of the median family income. Rent funds can be applied towards past rent, extending back to April, 2020, or can be applied to future rent, depending on the expressed need. And in addition to direct rental assistance, the remainder of the rent program funds will provide additional services related, such as tenant stabilization, eviction prevention, and direct community outreach, outreach to our communities most in need. Our goal is to provide rental assistance to more than 2,000 households per month, with approximately two thirds of these selected applicants being 30% or below the median family income. And I'm pleased today to be joined by our key partner in delivering the rent program, 
Mike Gerber with the Housing Authority of the City of Austin. Mr. Gerber will now provide more information on eligibility requirements, application procedures, and timelines. Mr. Gerber. Thanks so much, Rosie, and a big thanks to everyone there at the um, City of Austin's Office of Neighborhood Housing and Community Development. Uh, they've done an extraordinary job um, piecing together a very challenging program in a challenging time. Um, and I really just want to give a, a shout out to them. I also want to thank our mayor and our city council for their leadership in pri providing the necessary resources to help so many in our community, uh, our neighbors truly in, in need, as well as our city manager, Spencer Cronk, and to our assistant city manager, Rodney Gonzalez, whose leadership is really indispensable in pulling all of these uh, programs together. Um, for many years, the Housing Authority of the City of Austin uh, has been uh, has worked to provide housing stability and assistance uh, here in our in our community, and we're proud to, in just such a challenging time, be able to step up and, and do that once again in partnership uh, with NHCD. Um, I'd like to provide a little bit of information regarding the eligibility and the application process. Applicants for the rent program must live within Austin's full purpose city limits. The applicant household income must be 80% or less of the median family income. Applicants have to currently be on a lease or in a contractually bound rental relationship. Applicants cannot be currently receiving uh, other forms of federal, uh, federal rental assistance, such as a Section 8 voucher. Replic uh, applicants may not be a full-time student whose rent is paid by someone else. Um, and finally, applicants must provide documentation showing that COVID-19 has impacted them, has affected them financially. Uh, and that'll be done through pay stubs, unemployment notices, notice of rent due, uh, or other types of, of verifying notices. Again, this is a program intended for those who've been impacted uh, by the ravaging effects of, of COVID-19 on our community. Starting on Wednesday, August 19th, that's just two days from now at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, eligible renters for this program may apply online at austintexas.gov backslash rent. Again, that's austintexas.gov backslash rent, R-E-N-T. This webpage contains a wealth of information uh, and will directly link folks to the rent application portal. Applications will remain open through January of 2021 or until all the funds have been depleted. Applications can be submitted 24 hours a day, seven days a week from any smartphone, a smartphone, mobile device, or computer with internet access. So there's not a rush to apply in the first 15 minutes uh, of the program. There's time to apply and we want people to do that safely because we know that there's an immense amount of, of need. The application will be available in English, Spanish, Arabic, Korean, simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, uh, Myanmar or Burmese, uh, Urdu and Vietnamese, the, the languages that are most prominently spoken here uh, in our very diverse city that we all love. I'm now gonna turn it over to Pilar Sanchez, who's our vice president here at Hakka for uh, Austin Pathways, which is a subsidiary of our agency, who's gonna talk about the application process in more depth uh, and, and application assistance that's available to folks uh, in our community. Pilar. Thank you, Mr. Gerber. Those who need assistance completing an application or a language translation or a specific communication format may call 512-488-1397 from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Individuals who may need hearing or speech accessibility may call the Texas Relay Service by dialing 711 for assistance. Once an eligible application is submitted, it's entered into an application pool, which will undergo a monthly random selection process. And the first one will occur August 26. Eligibility specialist will then further review the application and the landlord will be contacted for confirmation. Once an application is fully approved, the rent payment will be issued directly to the landlord on behalf of the tenant in the full amount of the contract rent. Applications not selected in the first random selection process will remain active for subsequent random selections, which are held monthly. Therefore, only one application needs to be submitted per household. All applications submitted during the open application period have an equal chance of being randomly selected, meaning there is no need to rush to submit your applications when they open at 8 a.m. on Wednesday. Rosie? Yes, thank you, Ms. Sanchez, for that information. 
Lastly, I want to acknowledge that we know we cannot conduct this rent program alone. Last week, we announced community outreach grants for partnerships to support tenant stabilization, eviction prevention, and outreach to vulnerable communities affected by COVID-19. I'm going to ask Nefertiti Jackman, who is managing these grants for neighborhood housing and community development to give a brief description of these mini grant opportunities. Ms. Jackman. Thank you, Rosie. Um, a key part of the rent assistance program is collaboration with our mission driven organizations throughout the city of Austin to help us get the word out to uh, support applicants. As Rosie mentioned last week, the city announced $400,000, uh, a grant opportunity to support community organizations who can reach out directly to the focus population through phone calls, video chats, social media engagement, as well as other services uh, that might include helping households complete applications by helping them to gather the appropriate documents, uploading those documents, setting up emails, and putting out flyers and door hangers. Applications are open to small businesses and community-based organizations, and they can apply for these grants, which range from $1,000 to $50,000 before the 4 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time deadline on Tuesday, August the 25th. We are glad to provide the streamlined online application proce uh, process in partnership with the City of Austin's Equity Office. More information on these grants can be found on NHCD's website, www.austintexas.gov backslash, backslash housing, and click on the news story that stated August 11th, announcing the community outreach grants. Uh, we'll now turn it over to Jeff, our moderator, to facilitate uh, questions from the press. Thank you very much, Nefertiti. I, I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to uh, Kevin Clark from KXAN, who's serving as the pool reporter, uh, for him to um, ask uh, the questions. Kevin? Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you all for answering a few questions today. Um, this first question comes from KUT, and it's the city of Austin announced the second round, the second round of rent assistance in late July. Why did it take nearly a month to open applications? I can take that. Um, we have, this is Rosie. Uh, we've been spending uh, a great uh, amount of time working with HACA and working to make some significant changes to the first round of, of rent that we provided uh, in, in accordance with the needs that were that we were seeing with the applications that came through on the first round and in accordance with some direction that we received from our city council. And so it took us a little bit of time to get um, to get the new program up and to make sure that it was going to be a stable platform for Austin to be able to apply into. This next question is from Co-op Radio and it's are people living in extended stay and short term rental housing like hometown or hometown studios extended say america are they eligible for rent funds yes um pilar do you want to do you want to take that sorry yeah that's fine um yes as long as they have a lease um, um at a traditional apartment complex or a rental place yes at an extended stay they can submit an invoice or um, a receipt showing that they've been paying for their monthly stay there and that is one of the changes that we made to uh, to rent between the first iteration of the program and now to be able to reach more people in need. Okay, this next question uh, comes from us here at KXAN. And um, to what extent, and if you could quantify this if possible, but to what extent are we seeing unlawful evictions happening in Austin, Travis County, or unlawful eviction filings? happening here, even with the local moratorium in place. Nefertiti, do you think you could speak to that? I don't have any data in front of me, but you might. Right. No, actually, we don't have any data. Uh, we have only received um, anecdotal stories from uh, people working in this space about people being informally evicted. 
but there are, um, and when we are made aware of these, there are a number of community-based organizations uh, who, when they're made aware, they are able to help to facilitate arrangements and reach out to landlords and also sort of provide information to landlords about the laws that are in place right now and the, the current ordinances. So, uh, but in terms of formal evictions, that is not happening right now um, as a result of failure to pay rent. Um, so, but we don't have any data on informal evictions. Rosie, if I could just chime in on that, at the Housing Thanks. Authority, um, you know, we obviously operate uh, units that you know were formerly known as public housing. They're now uh, called project-based rental assistance housing. We also operate uh, a large number of units through our Austin Affordable Housing Corporation subsidiary. And one of the things that I think is a hallmark of of those two programs is that we are working aggressively with residents uh, who are in need and who are struggling to pay their portion of the rent to make sure that we understand uh, you know what their situation currently is and to really work with folks and this time of need landlords are really called upon uh, to work with folks and we're seeing that in our section 8 program as well where we you know support and assist nearly 6,000 families out on Austin's open rental market we've had a great partnership with the Austin Apartment Association with the Austin Tenants Council Rio Grande Legal Aid and other resources to help prevent um, eviction and frankly to make sure that landlords uh, uh, know how to do the right thing because it's a it's a ch it's a challenging time all around, uh, but we need to make sure that our neighbors in need uh, have the resources to prevent uh, unlawful evictions. Uh, we want to keep people housed. That's the key to just about every other uh, uh, service and 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 every other uh, being able to access uh, you know resources in this community uh, that will be so critical post pandemic. And that is one of the things again as we talk about changes that happened to the program between the first inception and now. We have added a robust uh, tenant stabilization component to this to, to the rent program. And so we will be able to connect people if they indicate that they need assistance with eviction prevention or or um, landlord mitigation or tenant counseling, we can we can facilitate directly uh, linking them with providers to help provide that assistance. Okay, circling back around to KUT. Um, a question from KUT again, and it's um, when exactly, and I believe you touched on this a little bit, but when exactly will the first rent payments be made as far as the second process goes, and does the city pay landlords directly? Pilar? Yes. We, we estimate that the first random selection will occur on um, August 26th, and within a week from there, payments should start flowing uh, directly to the landlords. <laughs> And hopefully every week thereafter, we'll be making payments um, to a large number of, of landlords weekly. Um, we estimate about 10,000 months of rent will be paid. So uh, we hope to be processing uh, large numbers of payments every week. All right, this question is from Co-op Radio again, and it's are people who pay rent but not on formal leases eligible for rent funds? If so, what documentation do they need? What specific documentation do they need to generate to prove their rent amounts? And I'll add, because there was some concern about this last time, do people need to provide a social security number? Those are great questions. A social security number is not required. We are asking for a unique identification number just to ensure that we're not duplicating benefits. Um, but um, all applications will be treated uh, the same regardless of whether there's a social security number or not. Um, as far as an informal lease, we would need something that shows a formal contractual relationship uh, with a rental provider. So if there is some sort of a contract in place, even if it's not a lease with a multifamily property, um, we can use that. Okay, um, another question from us here at KXAN. Um, I know last time from some of the data, we saw that veterans who received payments, I believe it was about 2.8% of those who received them, and then those with disabilities was about 6%. Um, can you please explain specifically how this second round of rental assistance will be tailored to better serve vulnerable targeted populations, especially if the process is at random? 
the selections. So I think we're going to cover that largely through the community outreach and the mini grants uh, that Ms. Jackman relayed information about. So I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Jackman to respond to that question. Absolutely. Um, the first rent program, we had zero marketing dollars. I mean, that was launched rather rapidly. Uh, the second round, this round, we do have a very strategic uh, marketing and outreach plan, both in addition to the many grants, which we certainly hope to reach. And uh, part of our focus population includes uh, vet veterans. Um, so that's what that $400,000, uh, those grants are for, to really identify organizations that have a connection, have demonstrated success with um, the focus population, which includes veterans. And then also, uh, the marketing dollars that we have allocated as a department is uh, specifically targeting uh, veterans and other vulnerable populations. So I think the team has done a great job designing a very focused and strategic marketing outreach plan. And then Pilar, I think you wanted to add. Also, also we're going to ensure that every random selection draw includes 66% uh, of that draw will be families who have 30% and below of the MFI in income. Um, so we will uh, be pulling uh, from two different pools just to ensure that that happens. Um, everybody that's 30% and below will pull 66%. If it's a thousand applications that we're gonna screen that week, then seven, about 700 will be 30% and below and the remaining will be between 30 and 80%. So if I can just uh, follow up there uh, with another question, it sounds like, especially with veterans and those with disabilities, those groups getting assistance hinges on the marketing and the outreach that will be made to, to reach them so they can apply? Well, the good thing is that um, last week we held two webinars for, uh, for community organizations that we hope will reach out to the populations that were hard to serve. And we had um, over 150 community organizations participate in those. A lot of them are committing to assist their, their community with the application. And um, I think the VA had one of the largest number of representatives at, at the webinars. I think they had about six or more people attend those uh, to be able to get all the information so they can try and assist their their veteran community. Rosie, if I could just chime in and in yes, response please. to Kevin's question. Um, so with with the with the pilot program for rent that we did back in May and June, it was a fairly quick turnaround. We knew the need in the community, NHCD and, and, and HACA were working hard to move dollars as quickly as we could. We used our existing uh, partnership network that both or that both agencies have. Um, but it was a very, very fast turnaround. So the opportunity for this to, to you know, seep into the community and to really be um, you know, known as widely as we might have wished um, would have taken just a little bit more time. This program has a little bit more time associated with it. And frankly, we've been doing some spade work with those, neighbor, with those community organizations, with those nonprofits and other governmental agencies. So much of that took place uh, last week and we're so excited to have literally you know, dozens of agencies uh, that have participated uh, in those in those uh, workshops and are going to be stepping up, I know, to help uh, with this program over the next several months. So we're looking for a, it'll be not just a much more robust marketing, uh, but also folks who are going to have real um, uh, ability to help uh, folks uh, in historically underserved populations complete the applications, uh, work through the process, upload the information that needs to be uploaded, uh, and lend and lend additional forms of support. Um, so there'll be a number of organizations doing that, some of which will be supported, of course, by the community grants that, that Nefertiti uh, spoke of that'll be so critical uh, to maintaining the capacity of, of some organizations in our, in our community with, to be able to help them provide uh, that type of, of, of marketing and, 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 and general application assistance. But this is, I think you're gonna be seeing because of the scope of this program and the longevity of this program, a much more ro robust, um, uh, marketing and 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 um, engagement process to help the maximum number of people in this community uh, who need help be aware of the program and to have them apply. 
Okay, we have, uh, as of this time, about three questions left. So um, this one again from KUT. Um, are people who received rent assistance from the first round eligible to receive rent assistance this time? Yes, they are. Okay. Um, this one from us again, KXAN. In the initial round of rental assistance payments, around 1,680 people were helped, um, but it wasn't enough to help thousands of others who were unable to receive direct assistance. Um, who are, to what extent will those people receive priority in this round or will it be completely random? It, it will be completely random and we will be asking those folks to apply again um, if they were not selected or if they are, are still in need of assistance uh, from the first round. Um, to, they will be part of the random process like everyone else. And lastly, um, this is from Co-op Radio, the 80% MFI threshold, is that figure determined per tax household or per domestic household? That is, do roommates need to consider their non-tax household members' incomes in addition to their own? I'm going to ask Pilar to take that. Thank you. Yes. Um, the it is it is based on the number of people living in the household and that means that every all of the income for that household needs to be counted so if you have uh, people living with you and they have income you do have to count their income if it's a, a student landlord situation where you have five people living in one apartment but each one has their own lease then we can assist the one person with one lease um, but um, as long as the lease includes a group of people, then um, it's considered, uh, we'll consider the income of everybody in the household. Okay, thank you. Um, Kevin, thank you so much for serving as pool reporter today. We certainly appreciate it. I want to thank all of our participants for uh, coming on and, and providing um, terrific answers to the questions. I'll remind the reporters that if you do have questions later after we finish today, please feel free to reach out to me either by email or our phone and we'll get back an answer to you as quickly as possible. Thank you again everyone for, for, for participating uh, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.